Good day, good evening, good morning, or good night, complete strangers. The name is Dreddix, and today I wanted to bring you a Christmas video, but because Christmas is such a very difficult time of the year, and I only realized that it was December a couple of days ago, I decided today that I'm going to be bringing you a top something Christmas video games that I stole from other people's lists. The links to those lists will be in the description below, but for now, let's just get started. Please don't sue me, Internet God. <laughs> Time to you yes. For those of you unaware of Duke Nukem, he's a muscly man's man that smokes cigars, shoots aliens, kicks ass, chews bubblegum, and appeals to an American audience. When I think of 1990s PC gaming, I think of Duke and the many, 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 many renditions and forms that he's taken throughout the years, with his best one being Nuclear Winter. Now, I don't want to give this too much credit. I mean, it's a total reskin of the previously made Duke Nukem levels patched together to make a quote-unquote entirely different game. Staying alive, staying alive. You see, in the original Duke Nukem, you were kicking alien ass in order to save your babes. But in Nuclear Winter, the setup is completely different. This time, you're fighting... Uh... Ooh... 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 Does that say feminists? Well, in-game, you're fighting snowmen and aliens with Santa Claus hats on, but according to the opening text, you're fighting... feminists. I mean, yes, Duke Nukem was known for making fun of pop culture, so doing something like this isn't too weird of a concept, but it just, I don't know, feels a little bit early for this, you know? Like, like we're making fun of feminists right now, not back in the 1990s, like, jeez. Dookie was ahead of his time. What most really remember about this reskin, however, is the nightclub scene in the beginning, because bubs, and that piece of shit outside scene with the snowman on the snowmobile, and then you try to like take cover and get some more ammo, but then he like comes around the side and you're just like, yeah, ah, ah. shit, 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 what's going on? What's going on? Snowballs? Sto How the fuck do snowballs hurt? They're soft water! Fuck, 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 No ammo, no shotgun, no chewing gum. Gotta get out of here, gotta get out of here. Go through the door, go through the door, go through the door, go through the door. No, 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 no! I didn't ask for this for Christmas! Get it! Because it's Christmas! This level's hard. Costume Quest reminds me of Psychonauts. That's pretty much the most interesting thing I can say about this game because I'm almost positive nobody knows what it is. But what it is, is a take turn combat RPG centered around little children beating up monsters with their super powered costumes. The concept alone reminds me a lot of Illusions of Gaia with the different magical beings that you can possess, or Bleach with each weapon having another soul of its own, or JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> But besides all that, Costume Quest had a DLC called Grubbins on Ice, where the crew goes on an adventure into a snowy mountainside. And I gotta say again, this art style really sells the game for me. I mean, fine, the animation is pretty... Uh, and, and uh, well, their eyes don't seem to... Don't seem to blink. But I've always been such a sucker for this older kind of 3D animation and modeling. It's like PS1 graphics. There's a charm to it, even if it doesn't technically look good. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? My daughter. I've got to find her. And seeing snow so richly piled up over picnic tables and scattered around parks is so nostalgic to me. It's a solemn, happy joy. But that was a different time, before the dark times, before the Empire. <laughs> and next up on the list is Fallout 4. What? This isn't Christmas. This isn't even winter. There isn't even snow in it. Gosh, dang it. Why would they put this on the list? I can't steal this. It sucked. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. 
oh, 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 oh. It's just a it's just a top ten. It's just a shitty ass top ten game of the year that that some dick made Christmas. He don't fucking trick me like that. What is fuck you, Bob Bernstein? Don't do that shit to me. Come on. I thought that I was in for a fun ride of explorations in Christmas times, but no. Bobby Bernstein, no. Apparently not. You bought my buttons for the last time, Bobby Bernstein. <laughs> Damn it. Fuck. You can't keep laughing at my own jokes. Those stupid jokes. You're going to be here all night. We fucking stopped stealing the bottle. Now I know this isn't exactly what you would call a Christmas level, but closer to a snow level that I neglected to put in my top something snow level that I made a while back, but I'm already cheating anyways, and who doesn't love Ape Escape? I plan on talking about this game in greater detail later on when I have a little bit more time, so for now, let's just talk about Snowball Mountain. What really sells this game the most is its visual appeal. The PS2 was a monster console with a thousand... <laughs> You know, I'm almost actually certain that it was close to a thousand different ports of games for it. It was also around the time we finally got out of that awkward 3D gaming phase where it was pretty obvious we didn't really know what we were doing. And I know that I just said I like this kind of 3D modeling and animation, and I do. I still stay strong by that notion, but I feel like there's a big difference between Silent Hill and Hybrid Heaven. God, it's just depressing to look at. But now it's the futuristic year of 2001 and we finally got our heads on straight so we can make levels look like this. That's it, that's it, that's it. Taking my pants off, that's it. I'm just taking my pants off. No, you're not! I'm not taking my pants off, guys. Don't worry, I'm not taking my pants off, just kidding. Is the Ape Escape series just another overly complicated collectathon? Uh... Hell yeah it is, and fuck you for doubting it. I'm on a Chaos Emerald hanging from a Christmas tree. I'm riding on a Snowder cycle into apes just to teach them what natural selection's all about, bitch! If you're gonna look me dead in the eyes and tell me that this game has a shitty camera and a dorky gimmick that lasted too long, then you're actually right. But that doesn't stop this level from being one of the most action-packed snow levels for the PS2! <sighs> Lord bless the man in red. Uh, Fallout 4, Need for Speed, Laura Croft, Minecraft Story Mo Star Wars Battlefront, Football Manager 2016, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, what the fuck? Alright, finally getting back on track here. Not just a Christmas level, but instead an entire Christmas game all on its own. Alright. Yeah. Now, uh, how do we get to Christmas nights? Yeah, according to this thing, it says you gotta beat the game. I gotta beat the game? Yeah, you gotta beat the game. Beat the game, beat the game? You gotta beat the game, game. Well, fuck that noise. Here's some footage from online. And honestly, the game plays exactly the same way. Flying through rings, doing donuts, collecting guns, blowing up robots, any of the thousands of hardcore Knights into Dreams gamers would no doubt scoff at this shameful display. When really, the main appeal of these games comes mostly from its visuals. Knights into Dreams was always a super colorful game, and Christmas is nothing but bright colors. Lights on Christmas trees and on houses, colorful wrapping paper on presents, bright stockings hung up on chimneys, and really... Why do we have chimneys anyways? Personally, I put a DVD shelf in front of mine. Santa's gotta walk through my front fucking door and personally give me my free shit. It's just such a perfect fit for Nights into Dreams to do a take on Christmas, and I feel that's why it's such a beloved section of the game. Also, because I found it on pretty much every single list that I stole from, so really, I just need to put it on for your for obligation's sake. <laughs> Ah, Christmas. 
Christmas Day. So beautiful. Mr. Scrooge, can I please have some money? Now allow me to pose a philosophical question to you. What was it that got you into a certain MMORPG? Was it a link that you were sent in your email that got your attention? Or was it some ad on a website that really caught your eye? Or was it just typing random words into Google hoping to find something cool? Huh? No. No, that is never, never how you get in. It has always been through your friends. Your friend will come strolling up to you on the blacktop and be all like, Hey, I just heard about this game. You want to make a character and join me? And even if you do manage to discover the game before anybody else does, you still want to assemble all your friends to join you. Because what's a good role-playing game without a good party, you know? Momorpikas are entirely dependent on socializing, and what works hand-in-hand -hand with that is seasonal events. From the rare Santa hats and different seasonal quests in RuneScape, to the Christmas thing in... World of... Warcraft, I don't know. What the hell? You damn teenagers! Every Mamorpaga had a Christmas item or event attached to it, and because it only came once a year, it was special. You'd get that one fucking cunt bag in class that was talking all like, Oh, I got a Santa hat. It's super rare and discontinued by now, so it's very hard to get. Yeah, 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 very, very hard to get. Yeah, very hard to get. Or you just farmed magic trees for about an eternity to go buy one at the Grand Exchange from some dude that realized after wearing his hat for 10 minutes that, wow, I wasted my fucking life trying to get this thing. I could have bought actual armor or something and then sells it back to try and get his money. But, but that's what I mean. These items were an event in and of themselves. Sometimes they were just simply items to buy, but other times they were quests with complicated instructions and a collection of items to get. And going about it all with your party, joking, chatting, and goofing around. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. Good day, good evening, good morning, or good night, complete strangers. The name is Dradix. Have a happy holidays, and I'm an expert.